Hello and welcome to 3D Printed Tabletop. I am Danny, the 3D Printing DM, and in today's video, I'll be showing you how to paint these 3D printed forest trees. If you're interested in these models or the supplies I use throughout this video, you can find the links in the description below. So check them out. These trees were modeled by Ryan B. Secker of Heroes Horde, and they are beautiful sculpts. I've scaled several of them to different sizes for a variety on my table. Now when I printed these trees, I was using a new filament and my settings weren't calibrated. So as a result, got some under extrusion, my infill was weak, and I had some major breaks that needed repair, as you can see. I decided not to toss them and try to repair them instead. I used a variety of methods like quick grip, polyurethane, and filler primer, which are usually my, my very simple go-tos to fix them to the best of my ability without losing too much detail in the final sculpts. In the end, I definitely improved the quality of these trees, but some parts just weren't worth it repairing for me, personally. And so I decided not to overdo it and call it a product feature of the wood grain, right? That's the way it's supposed to be. On the table, what was left of those print failures isn't very noticeable, so for me, I still call this a win. After the repairs, we are at the part where most of you will start, priming your printed trees. I start by priming the trees with a flat black spray. I use either Colorplace Black Matte from Walmart or Krylon 2X Flat Black Matte Spray Primer. I like Flat Black Matte because one, if your filament is any color besides black, it creates these natural shadows that you don't have to worry about painting. Uh, two, if your filament is black, it's more than likely that it's shiny and it's obviously shiny if you just paint straight on the filament. So that's a small pet peeve of mine because when you look, the shadows are, are shining back at you but everything else is muted. Uh, PLA does take spray primer really well in my experience, but on top of that, it also just helps grip the acrylic paint when you're painting it on a little bit more. So personal preference of mine. Throughout this video, I'm pretty much exclusively using a technique called dry brushing. All you need is an older brush or a brush that you just don't care about. You'll want to make sure that it isn't too small, but not too big either. So you'll understand the technique as you go, as the video goes on and, and you'll see why I say medium sized old brush is best when you're printing these trees at this size. Now for a base coat, you're gonna start with a simple base coat of a dark brown, like a burnt umber. You're gonna get some paint on the brush and you're gonna wipe the excess off. And keep in mind, I'm using a heavy dry brush since I want this to cover most of the model at this point. It probably isn't really a dry brush because it's pretty wet. And this isn't about hitting the edges. You want to hit a lot of the model with this very first base coat. And you do still want to leave some of those big uh, and little cracks here and there that are, you want to leave them black with this base coat. Uh, I only want there to be some shadows. So, you know, if this gets the, into the cracks, it's okay because it's a very dark brown and it'll still end up creating these natural shadows along with the other layers and highlights that we're going to be doing. Our next layer is Nutmeg Brown, a second, a lighter shade of brown. This is our medium shade of brown, if you wanna call it that. And after it dries, you're gonna lighten it up and you're gonna use a lighter shade of brown, right? This time, when you wipe the excess off, you're gonna to wanna to make sure there isn't very much paint on the brush. So when you brush, you are brushing against the parts of the tree that are sticking up. You wanna to try to change the orientation of the brush to give you some variation in strokes and color as well. Next layer is a Territorial Beige. Now this is gonna serve as our next highlight. And you'll want to make sure there's very little paint on the brush because, again, this is a highlight, not a base coat. And you want to be careful not to wash out that color that you just laid down. So try to paint in a random pattern and around certain corners or edges that you want to accentuate. And if you still want more highlighting after this, there will be plenty later. So don't worry if it isn't crazy all over the place. If you are in a rush and aren't quite ready to get more advanced yet, or you just want to get these on the table, in my opinion, you can stop right here. I would call these tabletop ready. More than likely, if you want the end result that I have at the end of the video, keep watching. All right, next up, undertones. Now we're now laying the foundation for a wash. 
some subtle undertones, which I'll explain a little bit later if you don't know what that is. We're setting up colors that we can later on mute and then go back and re-highlight to bring out the depth in these sculpts that has a little bit more color, subtle color. I start with the pumpkin orange because, you know, I, I normally don't like gloss, but it's all I had, so I used it. You do it very lightly. You hit a few random areas, different different directions, right? And you want this to add some variety and some additional warmth in different areas. And then I do the same thing with barn red and then golden sunset. Not too much, just, just there. And I kind of switch it up on some trees more than others. And I know this is looking like the weekend before Thanksgiving in a Target store. But, -a -psh. but this is going to make this part of the tree look more alive and radiant. Almost like red woods. Okay, in my opinion, it makes it more interesting. And sure, it might feel a little bit cartoony at this point. But I promise it's going to get better with the next step, which is the wash. Now, if you don't want this effect, you're welcome to skip this part. Now we're going to apply two washes to these trees. A wash is a mixture of diluted paint or ink. In its simplest form, it's as simple as water and paint. But these are homemade mixtures. They're DIY. The brown red wash is like my dark earthy wash. And it's a combination of browns, reds, and some other stuff like greens and a little yellow. With a little bit of dish soap to help the flow. I do the same thing for the black, uh, but this is also where you can tell I'm from a Cuban home based on the seasoning containers I'm using as DIY storage, okay? Now the black brown wash is mostly black with some brown thrown in there. Now this isn't a pitch black, it's almost like a tint of gray when I put it down, it's more subtle. I use the DIY stuff for my terrain because there's so much of it. But if I'm working on a small important detailed piece or on the minis, I use the more expensive equivalent, which is Agrax Earthshade from Citadel Paints for the brown red and Nuln Oil for the black. I just literally got a brush and covered these things like crazy in the brown red and then while it was still drying did the same thing with the black and I'd let it pool in random places and just made sure I got into all the cracks. I chose to cover it with both black and a brown wash because I want there to be some variation in the pooling and the different subtle colors. You want it to seep into those cracks. Like I said, it's going to meet those colors, but it's going to fill in the cracks and the recesses and create these shadows. So when we add the final highlights, all you're left with is this undercoat of color and natural shadows. Pretty cool effect. I like it a lot. Now, once you've covered these trees with both washes, you want to let it dry completely. So now we're going to weather these trees a bit. We're going to add in some grays. First, with a medium gray, I'm going to use a pewter gray here. Again, subtle and not heavy brush strokes. You don't want to mute the colors completely. Just have parts of these trees look older. Now, we're going to use our lightest brown again, which is territorial beige. I go back with that brown and I highlight using that beige from Again, you'll recognize it from the pre-wash steps that I used to add some, some base layers. Stacking the color variation here so it isn't obvious and it's more subtle. Now I'm going to do a highlight of a lighter gray, which is granted again. We're going to go back to that gray and we're going to highlight with this lighter color because sure it's pretty bright when you compare it with the rest of our palette, but it's going to start to make this contrast from warm highlights to a cooler, more eye-catching highlight. So make sure there's even less color here right not too much paint and we're gonna get brighter than this so small and subtle strokes people now I'm gonna add a little more color yellow and I'm gonna again do this to bring in the warmth so that it isn't weirdly cool all of a sudden very very light dry brush to hit it you know to hit these bits and pieces and I don't do this to all of them only a few so that there's some variation between these trees I'm choosing to add some green at this point too. And since I'm not gonna be basing these trees, I want them to blend with my board. So I'm stroking the bottom parts of them with this green softly. So it'll look kind of weird at first, out of place. But once you see it on the board, you'll get why. It makes the transition to the bottom piece, the green board smoother. And I'd only do this on those areas as well where, you, where you need, you're gonna have some greenery growth on them and where I'm choosing to put flocking later. I do a final body highlight on the tree of an antique white. It's an off-white. And if you look 
add a lot of bark that's coming off. You'll see there's various shades of white on there, which is why we use the gray and why we do a final touch of white. We're adding an off white that's going to cap this off and it's going to be the final touch. And you want to make sure you hit the tree, the circles or the areas that you want to draw attention to. That's what this final highlight is for. Just don't go crazy. Otherwise, you're going to have an over highlighted thing and you're not gonna, it's not going to be any use, right? Gentle, subtle, dry brush strokes. Now, there's a door on one of these trees and I want to make it a little bit different. So I didn't add all those variants to it, but it's got some, some trim work, right? It's got a couple of things like some metal pieces. So I'm going to paint them gold using antique gold and then a silver accent using gunmetal gray. Now normally you'd add a black wash here to accentuate the rivets and all that, but I'm kind of cool with it at this point. This isn't a showpiece and it stands out pretty much when you look at it on the board, so I don't mind it at this point. Now I wanted to add an extra touch to this, so I added some flocking. I've spread some Mod Podge down using a toothpick to get into these hard to reach areas. And then after I've got it spread, I sprinkle the flock in on top of it. And this is one of the reasons why I like the deep green highlight before the flock, because it creates this natural transition for the flocking and it looks a little bit more natural. I considered adding some vines for dramatic effect or adding some color highlights to the flocking, but I wanted to keep this simple and I just left it as is, okay? Finally, to seal my pieces, especially when I put flocking on it, I use Krylon Matte Finish. This is gonna keep that flocking locked in and it's gonna protect that beautiful paint job that you just did. And that's it for our paint job, people. Now let's talk about the most important part, our giveaway! All right, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed today's episode about these trees. Uh, I love these models. Some of them are a little bit bigger than I really could probably use, but I can just put a couple of them on the board whenever I do forests or swamps, and they look sweet. <laughs> I mean, what can I say? I like them a lot. So now we'll get to the big part, which is the giveaway. I didn't want to do a separate episode, so I'm just kind of tagging along at the end. And I am excited to announce that the winner of our first 3D printed tabletop giveaway is Scrapson. Full name, Daniel Beckman. Uh, thanks for tuning in, Daniel, and congratulations. I'll be reaching out to you shortly. To everybody else who participated, thank you so much for your feedback. It was phenomenal and helped me validate a lot of what's going on with the channel. So just to share the results of this giveaway, the videos that people are most interested in seeing, let me look it up here, is uh, post-processing tutorials which is part of the reason I'm doing this one, including it in this week, even though I've got a couple of under three videos I just released too, if you're interested in that printer. Um, the other ones that people are interested in is um, model reviews. So I'll be doing more of those in the future and definitely we got some Kickstarters coming up. So expect that, stay tuned for that. The ones that people were least interested in was the community discussions, which are like our talking head videos. So I won't be doing as many of those, but definitely expect some of those down the line uh, to kind of change it up. I, I don't like doing the same thing over and over again. I think that would get really boring for me too. <laughs> so um, the one thing that I did hear a lot was that people were interested in everything and that kind of makes me happy. I want to clarify that. Um, I'm not focusing on one specific thing. It's not like that's the only thing I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be incorporating a little bit of everything. And so I'll just have an idea of what to help me focus on. And it was great to get your input. Thank you and welcome to all the new subscribers uh, who've joined recently. I'm, I'm happy you're here. And I hope that you enjoy what we're doing here in the community that we're uh, growing here on YouTube. Thanks again for being here. Happy gaming and happy printing. Free commercial here for uh, Subway guys. Subway, eat fresh.